welcome to Coding with Chandler, and today's video is going to be on the basics of variables. As you guys know, I am teaching little beginner videos um, on Java. I'm going to teach you guys a little bit of the basics because it's one of the programming languages that I'm currently learning, and I figured why not share my knowledge and spread it. And I'll link in the description below um, this this API that I'm using, or you can download one for free called BlueJay. There's Eclipse, there's NetBeans, there's so many different ones you can download, and I'll link those in the description so you have access to those. So you can code along with me or you can do a little bit of your own thing. And right now I'm just going to make a new project and I'm going to click next, create project from template. And this basically just creates the class and main method for me. And the main method is what runs the program. And I'm just going to name this variables tutorial. You can name your project, whatever you would like. So for some of you who don't know what variables are, um, variables are used to store information your Java program needs to do its job. I like to look at variables as containers. If you've taken in a basic algebra class, you should probably have an idea what variables are. You've used a lot of X, Y, things like that. Those are variables, it just holds data. Um, another good way to think of variables is um, Starbucks cups, okay? You have your venti, you have your grande, grande, venti grande. Um, you have large, medium, small cups. Um, each can carry a certain amount of coffee, but it's a different, it's a different amount for each of them. Um, but they can also carry different things. So I like to think of variables as containers that can carry a different amount of data as well as a different type. There are eight different primitive types, and I'm going to explain each of those to you. So to use variables, we need to declare them, initialize them, and I'm going to show you how to declare a variable and initialize it. And um, the only way for your program to know that a certain variable exists is just by declaring it. And declaring it is when you state its data type and its name. The name can be absolutely anything. So for example, Boolean is a data type. And I wanna name this variable hmm, um, data one. You can name the variable anything you want to. And now your program now knows that data one exists. And you may be thinking, okay, so what can I store into this variable? Well, Boolean only takes in true or false. So data one, equals true so that is an example on how to declare a variable and initialize it basically it's just stating its data type and its name and then setting it equal to something initializing is when you actually give it its data when you actually set it equal to something that's not the only way you can declare and initialize a variable and a really really easy way to do it is just by stating its data type and then setting it equal to something just like that. It's really simple and easy. You don't have to do two lines like I did, but it can be done either way. So that right there is Boolean. Boolean. It takes in true or false. Our second one is byte. And this takes in numbers, but it takes like a very small range of numbers. You can It can only carry negative 128 and 127. Like I said, each data type has different sizes, different data ranges, and they each can carry a different amount of things. It's not infinite. They can't carry infinity. It takes up a certain amount of memory. So let's say I want to carry 20. Another data type is char, or what some people would say care or character. It's short for character, and this holds characters. So it doesn't carry numbers like bit does. Um, it just carries characters like x, y, z. It can only carry one character. So let's say I want to name this character x. So I declared it. The program now knows that I created a variable named x, and it's the data type of char. And what do we want it to carry? It can carry any uh, letter. When you set it equal to something, you can't just literally say g. It won't work that way. You have to put it in single quotes, g. So I now created a variable named x and set it equal to g. And chars take up up to 16 bits of data. Another data type we have is short, and that also carries integers. Um, I'll name this variable Let's just keep it simple and name it num, num1. And that's short for number one, if you were wondering. And we can set it equal to 32 if we want to. It can be equal to anything. I declared it and initialized it. The program knows that I created a variable named num1. It's type short, and um, I set it equal to 32. And short can carry up to negative 32,768. to 32,767. So that's the data range it has. You can't carry anything larger than that amount. And that takes up up to 16 bits. 
Okay, the next data type that is actually most commonly used is int. And this just carries regular integers. Num, num obviously carries regular integers too, but um, that's not the same data type. Integer can carry up to way more integers than short can. Same with um, bit or byte. And I will explain the difference between each of these soon because I'm sure some of you are confused because you may be thinking they're very similar and that they're same because they each carry numbers, but they're actually different. So we can set int to num2. And I will make this equal to 600, why not? And its data range is negative two to the 31st power to two to the 31st power. And that is an extremely, extremely large number. Next data type we have is called long, and that carries way more than int does. Most people don't really use long, but um, because you don't need numbers that are really that big. But um, yeah, it, it's used sometimes. By the way, you cannot use commas when you are um, stating your variables. You can't do that. The computer doesn't recognize it as um, a long. Um, its data range is negative 2 to the 63rd power and of course 2 to the 63rd power minus 1 same for int I forgot to mention minus 1 sorry another one we have is called float and this is different from the ones that carry regular integers the difference is that it carries decimal numbers we'll label this as num4 like I said you can name your variable anything you want to name it I can name it butthead if I really wanted to, it would work the exact same. And I'll set it equal to, you can honestly set it equal to anything you pretty much want to as long as it doesn't exclude the data range that it has. I guess float is good for trying to save your memory. I'll set it equal to 90. Um, this data type should never really be used for precise values, such as currency for example, because it never really returns the accurate number. By the way, these slashes is what helped me make comments, and it's so that it won't affect the rest of the code. If I just kept these slashes out, basically, I would get an error in my computer. And then the last one we have is called double, and this also carries decimal numbers. I will name, I will name this num5, and I will initialize it to... I will initialize it to 8.667. Why not? Um, double carries up to 64 bits. And this is also one of the most commonly used ones. I'd say the most, the top two would probably int and double. And its data range is extremely large. I'm not even gonna bother to read this number, but I'll take the time to type it out for you guys. Yes, it carries that much. I know, insane. So that right there is our eight primitive types. And the last type I'm going to show you guys is type string. And this is actually not even a primitive type, it's technically a class. But this type string can carry a line of text. Basically, I could set it equal to, hello, my name is Chandler. I can set it equal to a word, so cat or hot dog. I can set it equal to anything. And I'm going to name this variable text1. And this will be equal to Hello, world. So I'm sure a lot of you are confused right now. And like I said, each data type can carry different things, different amount of things. And you may be thinking, okay, so what's the difference between all the ones that can carry numbers like byte, short, int, long, float, and double? Well, the difference is the data range and how much they can actually carry up to. And if I were to try to um, place more than what the data type requires, for example, if I put like 40,000 in a short, that would cause an overflow. And like I said, think of it as a Starbucks cup. If you take a small Starbucks cup and try to place the amount you would place in a large cup, it's going to overflow and you're gonna lose a lot of coffee. Same with short. If you if I were to try to place 40,000, I would lose approximately like seven 7,000. You lose data basically is what I'm saying. It, that's what's overflowing basically. So like I said, if I place more than 2 billion, let's say 2.5 billion, in an integer data type, um, it will overflow and it can't carry that many uh, numbers, which will result in the loss of a lot of data, basically. So you should use long if you're trying to use extremely, extremely large numbers. Okay, so first I'm just going to show you guys a basic program on how to 
add together two integers. So, like I said, before you use an integer, you actually need to clear it to let the computer know that it's there and to initialize it to something, set it equal to something so you can actually do some mathematics with it. So, my first variable will be int x, and I will set it equal to 1200. Um, like I said, you cannot use commas. And then we'll do another one, y equals, I'll set it equal to 200. And let's say I want to multiply these two. So I'm going to use the sysout, system.out.println. For those of you who don't know what that is, check out my last video and it explains print statements. This is basically used to print something to your console so that you can actually see what's going on. Um, if I want to add these two together, um, I can do x plus y. And it should print that out to the console. Let's run the program and see what happens. And as you can see, it printed right here. 1400, which is what x plus y equals. Let's say I wanted to multiply these two. You are going to need to press shift 8 to multiply numbers. This is the um, operator you use to multiply uh, integers. And you get 240,000. Let's say I want to multiply two different decimal numbers. So you're going to label them double because double holds decimal numbers and double is one of the most common um, data types people use for decimal numbers. And let's say I wanted to multiply 2.5 times 2. Like I said, um, it's not going. you think it's going to output 5, but it's actually going to output 5.0 because it's always going to be a decimal number. See, 5.0. You can also subtract them as well. I should get 0 0.5. Uh, let's say I wanted to print some characters to the screen. So I could do char, char x equals single quotes, of course. You can't just set it equal to a letter. You have to use single quotes. x equals h. So if I wanted to print to the screen, for example, h equals 200, you could simply uh, print x to the console and then add a plus sign and then quotes and then plus quotes equals and then plus y. And this should print h equals y and y is 200. So let's see what happens h equals 200. So characters are, you can't really add them together or anything like that. They're letters, so you can use them to print certain things. They do have numbers behind them, but I'll explain that in a different video that's a little too like advanced to be explaining in an intro video. So let's work with string. Let's set my string variable text1 equal to my name, Chandler. Don't forget your semicolon. So I could do, let's set y equal to my age. I'm 18 years old. Okay, so right now I'm trying to print Chandler is 18 to the screen. Let's see. I could easily just say Chandler is 18 and it would print out Chandler is 18. You can put anything in the quotes and it will print out anything you would like. But let's say I wanted to use variables to print it out instead. So we could do text1 plus quotes space is space and then plus y and this should print out Chandler is 18 and some of you may be thinking well what is the point of using string variables when you can easily just type in this a string variables is an actual instance so I mean you can reuse it over and over again and um, instead of having to type it out constantly is what I'm saying and boolean. Boolean is the one that can carry either true or false. So what if I created a variable that's labeled uh, x and set it equal to true? And what would happen if I printed this out? What do you think it'll print if I print out x? Oh, wait, I can't use x because I already set a variable equal to x right here. So Let's just change it to capital X because Java is case sensitive. So X and capital X are two completely different things. They're not even considered the same or seen as similar. Anyways, um, we are going to print out. Oh, I accidentally printed out char capital X because it's case sensitive.
So what happens if I print out a Boolean variable? It'll just print out true right here. I can set it equal to false and it should print out false. So that right there is pretty much an idea on how to use variables. You can use them to add things together. If you just want to print out a simple line of text to the, to the screen, sorry, I can't talk. Um, if you want to multiply numbers, things like that, you can use it for a variety of things. I can't really cover everything you can use them for, but like I said before, they're used to store information. Your Java program needs to do its job, and um, you can make them do different things depending on what your program is actually supposed to do. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is the end of my tutorial on variables. I hope this broke things down for you guys. Um, I'll link a couple of tutorials in the description that explain variables better than I did because I'm not really a teacher, but um, I thought it would be cool to explain to you guys how those things work. Have a great day, uh, happy 4th of July, and I'll see you guys in a couple days.